The third pharmacokinetic process is metabolism. The first one being absorption and the second one being distribution. And just like those recordings, I intend to discuss metabolism in installment basis. This one really is just to show you why we even do metabolism in the first place. Can it just be released by the body um, without metabolism? Well, there are rare cases that it is possible, but we can just assume that almost every drug that we take has to be metabolized if it were to really experience all of our pharmacokinetic processes. Okay. And just to make things clear, I, I have here four situations wherein I have them, uh, I have here different compartments like the GI tract, the blood, the liver, and the kidney. Of course, the GI serves as the most common site of administration, blood, because to have an effect, you must first go to the blood or be absorbed. The liver is the main site of metabolism, and therefore the arrows here represent the actual process of metabolism, converting one molecule into another via chemical reactions. And the kidney is one of the main sites of excretion. Once something goes to the kidney, unless they go back, which is something that we will not discuss anymore because that's not the focus, it's goodbye, okay? We also have to look at the legend here and even the term right here because it will make things easier. First, we call the original drug molecule that we have taken in or injected or whatever method you used as the parent. Okay, so the original molecules are the parent drug and then the metabolites are the products once enzymes in our body in the liver or other organs would act on the parent. So it's like parent because you're the original thing, you're the mom, you're the dad, and then your offspring are the metabolites because that's what happens when you are changed via the process of metabolism. Okay, And we have here white for the active parent. And you see that the white is almost in the entire screen right here because the assumption is Right, most of the drugs we're taking originally are working, otherwise, why would you take them? Right, um, there are green molecules here called the active metabolites, meaning they're not anymore the original molecule, they've already been tinkered around by enzymes in our body, but they still do what the original parent is doing the therapeutic benefit that is. There are inactive metabolites in color red, meaning they have been metabolized already, changed by your enzymes, and they're not doing anything anymore. Then there are toxic metabolites in violet, meaning they have been changed, but they can harm your body. And there are inactive parent molecules, meaning you take them, but they're not working, which is like, you might ask, why do you even do that? So first, most of the time, we have metabolism for the main purpose of the activation, the activation. Probably 90% of the time, 90 95%, of course, those are just assumptions. But we can just imagine that our liver is really just doing it to prevent the drug from residing way too long in our body. We acknowledge that all the medications that we take in should not last inside us forever. They have to say goodbye eventually. And the liver will do that for us. They will convert the active molecules into in act, the active parents into inactive metabolites. And since anyway, they're not doing any beneficial effect anymore, off to the kidney it goes. It can actually go to different sites, as I said. It cannot just be urine. It could be sweat. It could be saliva. It could be other secretions. In fact, it could go to the GI tract and then exit our body through feces, right? Biliary excretion is what we call it, okay? So that's what we assume, right? But there are rare cases that your drug molecule is an inactive parent. And of course, for people without context, this is something that can enrage people because what, you're taking a drug that's not working? Isn't that waste of money? But there are actually some medications or drug molecules that are designed to be inactive at first. And then when the liver metabolizes them, well, some of them will not be working and have to say goodbye, the red ones. But some of them would actually be active metabolites, some kind of decoy. And these are what we call as prodrugs. So a pharmacy major who has taken other pharmaceutic subjects may have already heard of this term. They are only prodrugs. They are not working first. 
because they're just uh, like uh, they're just like a prelude or they're like an introduction to something which actually works later on. And it would even require the help of the liver to make them active in the first place. Now, there are reasons why products have to be made, okay, very rare cases. And that's not something within the scope of this recording anymore. It's more of a pharmaceutics thing. Now, there are possibilities or there are situations also relatively rare that you already have active molecules, active parents, and it is expected that we have inactive metabolites and they will say goodbye. But there are some metabolites that have activity, okay? Active metabolites. And this is very important because usually uh, metabolism spells the end for the parent, right? Once you're metabolized, it's over. You're not gonna do anything anymore. But the fact that some drug molecules have active metabolites to carry on what they're supposed to do has the tendency to increase the duration of action because um, what the parent molecule cannot do, which is to stay longer in the body, sometimes the active metabolites can do, okay? And therefore, there is this assumption that drugs with active metabolites can linger relatively longer than drugs of the same sort, which have no active metabolites. And finally, there's the possibility of having toxic metabolites, which is again, just as special as having active metabolites, because of course you expect that, yeah, some of the molecules will be inactive. Some of the metabolites will just go out as usual, but some toxic metabolites may mingle with your other active molecules and return to the blood and do harm. In fact, these are very rare cases, so much so that in toxicologic studies, the drugs that can have really well-known toxic metabolites are discussed one by one. That's how rare they are. You can discuss them uh, one by one, okay? But again, for most of the time, we acknowledge that metabolism is for most part a process of getting rid of the drugs, first by removing their activity, and then consequently, by completely removing their existence in the person's body.